So I want to talk about some people, a select portion of the Democratic Party's base, who think that they're doing something to help out the left, but in actuality, they're not really helping out the left. There's a number of people who are aggressively lobbying Joe Biden to choose Elizabeth Warren as his running mate, because in their view, that would be a concession to the left. And let me just put all doubts aside. Elizabeth Warren is no concession to the left at all. In fact, if Joe Biden chose her as his running mate, um, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, that would mean nothing to the left because she's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt she stands for absolutely nothing. So I'm not delusional enough to believe that she would try to, you know, nudge Joe Biden in the right direction. No, she would just go along with whatever he wanted because Elizabeth Warren is a team player, party above people. She's proven that time and again. And if you haven't learned that about her nature by now, then I, I don't know what to tell you. She's too far gone. She's irredeemable. And in 2024, I think that the left should, if there's someone available, attempt to primary her. It most likely won't be successful, but it still is something that we should try to do because I think we deserve better. We deserve to have someone that represents the left unequivocally, not conditionally based on whether or not it's convenient, right? So one of the people who has been pushing for Elizabeth Warren to be VP is uh, the insufferable Mehdi Hassan, who penned an open letter to Joe Biden saying that he should definitely pick her as a running mate because that would appease the left. And he also tweeted this. Uh, All the polling makes it pretty clear. If Joe Biden is genuine about reaching out to the left, to progressives, and to, yes, Bernie Sanders voters, he should make Elizabeth Warren his running mate. If he doesn't, we know he's not serious. Now, apparently, he needs some type of sign that (laughs) will tell us whether or not Joe Biden is uh, serious or not. He's not serious. But I mean, I I don't understand this. What do you expect Elizabeth Warren to do in terms of like helping the left? Nothing, nothing. And this is one thing that's really bothering me. Um, If you're going to vote for Joe Biden strategically in a swing state because you desperately want to oust Donald Trump, I can rationalize your choice to vote strategically. But don't lie about what we're going to get. Because the left isn't going to get a victory with Joe Biden. The one benefit is if we defeat Donald Trump, Donald Trump is defeated. And uh, in turn, Joe Biden will most likely be the one who replaces Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But that's it. I mean, any other benefit, like uh, not going to war with Iran, well, we just wait four to eight years until a more competent Republican comes along and uh, actually does what Trump wants to do. Um, undoing all of Trump's disgusting executive orders, that'd be great temporarily, but we just know that, you know, the next Republican is going to come along and undo all the progress that you've made, and then the next Democrat after that, subsequently, won't undo the harm caused by, you know, the Republican Party. For example, Donald Trump moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and Joe Biden says, you know, I don't agree with this, although I wouldn't move it back. So, I mean, do you understand? We keep lurching further and further to the right. And until we get a true revolutionary who's going to undo some of the institutional mechanisms in some way that is leading us to our ruin, both economically and when it comes to the environment, then we're not going to get real change. So we have to be real about ourselves. If you're voting for Joe Biden, I respect that. If you want to defeat Donald Trump, that's that's fine. I want Donald Trump to be gone. Because I don't want another four years of Donald Trump, but I'm not under this delusional idea in my mind that we're going to be able to put pressure on him. Of course, that's not going to happen. He's not going to listen to us when he's in office, because if he was going to listen to us, don't you think he'd be listening to us right now when he needs our votes? So just keep that in mind. Like We have to be realistic and temper our expectations. Defeating Trump is important, but let's not delude ourselves into thinking that we'll have any sway over Joe Biden whatsoever, because he's not going to listen to the left. He's going to listen to his donors in the same way that Obama and Clinton and any other corporate Democrat listens to their donors, right? And that's that. And, you know, as uh, Matt Leck put it, if Warren is the pick, it'll be for services rendered, not because it's a real concession to the left. Exactly. It's not a real concession to the left. And I don't think that Joe Biden would pick Elizabeth Warren. I just don't. 
Wall Street doesn't want him to pick Elizabeth Warren, and he'll likely listen to Wall Street. Now, I'd be happy to be proven wrong, but it doesn't matter. Like, even Wall Street doesn't like someone as, you know, a milk toast as Elizabeth Warren, because, you know, she know they know that she'll scold them, you know, uh, during a public hearing at best, at maximum. That's as far as she'll go. But they don't even want that. They want a corporate Democrat like Gretchen Whitmer. You know, so that's who I'm sure he'll gravitate towards. If not her, then that type of Democrat. But the problem with this line of thinking that Elizabeth Warren should be the VP is that people are outraged that others don't think the same way. So, for example, there's an article that came out about how Bernie Sanders isn't necessarily advising Joe Biden about who should be his running mate. He's kind of just ignoring that discussion altogether. And people are not happy with him because of this. So as Tal Axelrod of The Hill reports, Senator Bernie Sanders has thus far not encouraged former Vice President Joe Biden's team to consider Senator Elizabeth Warren as his running mate despite his longstanding ideological alliance with the Massachusetts senator. There is no ideological alliance, by the way. Three people familiar with Sanders' conversations with Biden, whom the Vermont lawmaker has endorsed, told The Washington Post that Sanders has declined to back some liberals' efforts to convince the former Vice president to select Warren as his number two. A top spokesperson for the Sanders campaign told The Hill that the senator and his team are not advising the Biden campaign's vice presidential selection process in any way, shape, or form. So basically, people are viewing this as Bernie Sanders snubbing Elizabeth Warren because um, he's not actively campaigning for her to be Joe Biden's running mate. And as the Washington Post's Matt Viser put it, Bernie Sanders, the liberal figure best positioned to push for concessions from Biden, so far has declined to support Elizabeth Warren as VP despite their ideological alliance, according to three people familiar with his conversations with Biden. Um, okay, Bernie Sanders doesn't owe Elizabeth Warren shit and stop trying to pretend like there's some ideological alliance. If there was an ideological alliance, maybe Elizabeth Warren wouldn't have tried to sink him before Iowa. Maybe she would have endorsed him after Super Tuesday. Now, I'm not saying that if she had endorsed him, then that would have led to him being successful, but at least it would have showed that she's principled for once in her life. But there is no ideological alliance. Elizabeth Warren is a reformer. She wants to make tweaks around the edges, whereas Bernie Sanders is more of a revolutionary. He wants to change the system fundamentally from top to bottom. And while I don't agree with him on everything, I at least acknowledge that there is a real substantive difference between him and Elizabeth Warren. I mean, Elizabeth Warren didn't even get elected, and she already backtracked on Medicare for All. She acquiesced and supported a public option. That's unacceptable. So, you're not a revolutionary, you're not an ideological ally to us if you're caving before you even get into the White House? No. So, it just, it irritates me that people are trying to, I don't know, create some type of momentum for Elizabeth Warren as if that'd make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Look, I don't care who Joe Biden picks as his running mate. I genuinely don't, unless it's someone like uh, Nina Turner or Bernie Sanders, like an actual Sanders ally. And I know that that's not going to happen, but the reason why I don't care is because I don't necessarily think they're going to have an influence on him. Joe Biden's running mate matters insofar as that will likely be the next, you know, neoliberal that we're going to have to deal with in four to eight years. Someone who we will inevitably have to fight. Whoever he picks, it's probably going to be someone who's shitty. And it just, it, it doesn't matter to me, right? So let's not pretend like there's anything we can do if you consider yourself to be left-leaning to influence Joe Biden. Again, I want Donald Trump to lose. I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden, but just make the argument that is the relevant argument. The only benefit to Joe Biden assuming power and ousting Trump, at least temporarily, is to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Like, in terms of getting any robust agenda passed into law, whatever he passes will mostly be done via executive order and undone by the next Republican administration. So, I mean, like, we have to be realistic because if we lie to people, if we gaslight people, and, you know, we give them a skewed perception of the power that they actually have, they're not going to use it properly. Like, people need to know what they have, you know, what tools they can use at their disposal to actually affect change. And getting Joe Biden to bend to the will of the left, 
um, I, that's just not going to happen. Like, he'd do it hell. He'd already offer you concessions when he needs your vote. But if you think he's going to be more inclined to listen to you when he's in power, when he doesn't need your vote, I mean, that's just naivete. And I get that people want something to hang on to because the you know future looks really bleak right now. But we've got to be honest with ourselves if we truly want to change the country. And trying to, you know, place our hope in a Joe Biden administration, I think, is misguided. If he wins and beats Trump, then hopefully he can replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But that's really the best that we can get out of Joe Biden's administration. That's it. Period. So, you know, this idea that Elizabeth Warren as VP would somehow fundamentally change what Joe Biden would bring us politically, it's delusional. And it's not going to happen. So if you are one of the individuals pushing for Elizabeth Warren to be VP, fine, whatever. Like, that's fine. But don't try to, you know, um, basically scold others as Matt Pfizer did to Bernie Sanders and get them to agree with your delusional idea that that's going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference. Elizabeth Warren as VP will absolutely do nothing for the left because she is not operating on behalf of the left. She's loyal to party leadership. And she's proven that time and again. I don't know what else she needs to do. Does she need to put it in writing for you? That she's not fighting for you? She doesn't care about the left? Like, what more do you want from her? Actions matter. And her actions throughout the course of not just the 2020 primary, but the 2016 primary show you beyond a shadow of a doubt that she has no spine. So it doesn't matter if she's the running mate. Joe Biden will still be Joe Biden, the pro-corporate neoliberal warmonger we've always known him as, and Elizabeth Warren as his running mate definitely is not going to change that. Stop fooling yourselves.